the awkward beginning of every live stream when you're just kind of getting everything <laughs> up and running. I'm scratching okay, so we're live now on YouTube. And let me just check over on Facebook as well. If we are live right now and you're watching us, hello. <laughs> Let's give us a moment. Um, hmm. Some girls don't. <laughs> oh, perfect. Here we go. Hmm. All right. Great. Some girls don't. Uh, all right. I'm going to just keep that up so I can see that. And so, yes, we are live. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, if you're watching, my name is Devin Shears. I am the director of programming communications for the Nickel Independent Film Festival. I've also I'm also the programmer of our film of the week. And uh, all this month, we are going to be doing local films from Newfoundland Labrador. And to kick it off, uh, we have the uh, super fun uh, Bingo Robbers, which um, I, I was excited to share again because we had it at our uh, festival back in 2020, the first online festival, and people were super excited to see it again. And so we thought we would have it up again, another chance for people to see it. And to, to talk about it a little bit is the is a, well, the co-director of the film, co-creator of the film, uh, Lois Brown. Uh, we, have, uh, we have her here. Hi, Lois. Hi, how are you? I'm doing very well. Um, so Bingo Robbers is a sort of, I don't know, like it, it, it's, it's, it's almost, it's kind of its own category. It's almost hard to describe. It's this like, it's kind of a crime comedy, but it's also about, uh, um, you know, like like family and, and community and things like that. Um, I, I guess just to start off, what was the, you know, how did, how did you, um, you know, what was the genesis of the film? How did it all start? Um, well, I had persuaded Barry that we were going to make a feature film. And, uh, we both wanted to be in it. So then we figured we better direct it because if we just wrote it and we weren't in it, uh, if we wrote it and we, we didn't direct it, then we probably would not be chosen to be in it. But if we were the directors, <laughs> we had a good chance of being chosen to be in it. And we kind of wrote it like sometimes lying around in uh, my bedroom and we had and we taped uh, uh, a uh, uh, we unrolled like a newsprint um, roll right around the bedroom. So it was like a big mural and we'd write things up. And um, we we knew we were going to write something about that would be these two people that just riding around St. John's all night. And uh, we, we thought, we naively thought that it would be cheap to uh, shoot something in a car. Right. <laughs> Turns out that that is not the case. And, um, and then we had to have something that, for them to do. So we were like, okay, let's say that for some reason they have to steal some money and they're, they're kind of petty thieves anyway. And that's how they survive. And, um, so Barry got out the phone book and he started looking through the book. He got as far as the bees and he was like, the bingo robbers. Yeah. I was like, oh, I love that title. So we had this title we really liked and that kind of helped us to, um, uh, to finish it. And uh, we, we did, we always had that idea that, um, they had a hard time being petty criminals because everybody knew who they were. Yeah, so, I mean, it feels it feels like a real St. John's movie in that way. And they're like, how like how would you even be sort of an anonymous uh, um, robber of all these things where you you show up and you know your uncle is the is the guy running the pharmacy? Um, yeah. So th that part of it's so hilarious. And they care also, about you, right? Yeah. Like, oh, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also, I, I love the dialogue, uh, you, well, you mentioned uh, uh, Barry Newhook, who's, you know, who um, is your co-star, co-director, co-writer, you know, the, the kind of yeah. second half of the film. Uh, what was it, like the, the dialogue of the film is so rich, so funny. What was it like, and like you said, you guys play the main characters. Were you kind of writing for, were you kind of writing for the character that you were playing? Do you know what I mean? Or yeah, was everything a collaboration. I think we uh, wrote a lot for what he, he wrote a lot for what the other one would say. 
Uh, that's you know, that makes sense actually yeah yeah also, yeah I love that there's all this um uh, uh there's kind of a, like there's a lot of talk of, like philosophy and ethics and morals and stuff like that where there's like the kinds of conversations you and Barry would be having you know outside yeah. of the film as well yeah and ideas about what we what I said that I was like and what he said he was like so I maybe what he says he's like isn't really what he's like but then we just put we make the character be what he says he's like if, if yeah that makes sense. no and, totally yeah yeah so yeah. We, um you know and a lot of the kind of uh uh dialogue some of the silliness uh the the dialogue goes into kind of silly places i think anyone who is at that place in their life where they don't really know what they're doing and they don't know what's coming up not next, often uh, through a long night's drive, we'll just get into these really uh, kind of silly philosoph philosophical answers uh, to each other's questions. Um, mm -hmm. And so from in that way, we were writing from uh, I re the reality of, of what it's like to not quite know where you're headed in your life. Yeah, I think that comes through really well in the film. Um, what was, well, you mentioned um, <laughs> as for some of the challenges maybe of, of, of shooting in, in a car, what was what was the production, you know, what, what was shooting the movie like? Uh, well, we asked Dana if she, we had a little tiny grant that was about um, just uh, $15,000. And, um, but it was enough to kind of perk her interest. It was like enough money that it was possible to perhaps build on that. Mm. And she really liked the script and she still loves the script. She's, uh, even this year, she said, you should really sell that script and like just have, get, you know, sell that script. Maybe there's a Hollywood version of that script that could be made. To her, it's like a very sweet, romantic um, kind of uh, film. And uh, she, she really sees it cinematically, which I'm really grateful for. Uh, she really was, uh, she was, uh, you know, the creator of the, the film along with Barry and I when she came on board um, because of her vision of it. Barry and I thought we were, making something we wrote with the intention that it would be something people watched you know around midnight or later on their vcr yeah you well know, it has a it has a real we had vcrs <laughs> yeah yeah well it has a it feels like it has a real like punk spirit to it which like right down to the end of music there's this yeah. uh, incredible center well when when was uh, music play such a big part of the film was that was that always part of the thinking of it that you know that these were like they're criminals but they're also artists um yeah. what was it like bringing in the music scene of saint john's at that time into the film um that was really uh a that was like a wonderful part of it and fur packed action were completely on board with it uh, they had this notion at one point, like legitimately, that I could maybe be their manager. <laughs> <laughs> so that was like a real discussion uh, mm -hmm. that we all had. And um, so, uh, you know, I, uh, they're an amazing band and, you know, deserve a really good manager, <laughs> someone who knows what they're doing. But I definitely was perfect to be the film manager. Yeah, and uh, we just had like so much fun with like uh, the kind of ways that Jody could play that, uh, you know, that character he can do so well, where he's like really aggressive one second, and then just like a real little puppy dog type another second. But <laughs> all the time he's writing, so <laughs> that scene where he's it, where Barry and I are having like a huge fight, and the car stopped. And he uh, kicks me out of the car. And, uh, and then um, I think Jeff or Jody boot him out of the car. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Jody's still there, like picking up lines that we're saying and writing it into a song. 
you know, to me, that's, yeah. that's purely based on Jody's ability to just pick up things people say and, and to write them and write a song around it. But mm -hmm. it really, um, but he can really twist the lyrics. It's not like a lot of country writers can pick up the common things people say and make them into a song, but he, he can pick it up and then add this really uh, unexpected twist to the, the dialogue in the song. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love, I, I love that. Yeah. You know, Jody is, Jody is amazing in it. He's uh, brilliant. Yeah. It's, um, uh, was it like, did it feel like a real, because you know, it, 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 you mentioned it was a fairly small budget um, for a feature, <laughs> uh, yeah. and um, was it a real kind of community effort? People coming together to to make this film. Yeah, well, uh, Jeff uh, Young Husband was also in it, as you know, mm -hmm. and then a um, fairly substantial part, and he was our uh, production designer. Yeah. <laughs> so he, you know, I can remember talking you know, learning little things about um, how to put up the set, like it's like in the set in the bin, uh, bingo halls. I'm like, why do the, these things have to come down? He's like, no, no, you have to fill the top of the frame or it just doesn't look good. And, um, you know, it doesn't, it, you'll have like all your action down here. And if the camera hits a little bit above your heads, there's nothing there. Yeah, and it, yeah. it makes me feel like it's a studio or empty, you know. Mm -hmm. So as we go along, he would be kind of giving me all his these little design tips. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. I love the, you know, he's not really doing designing now, but I love his designing because it's so full, so yeah. thoughtful. And yet a lot of times it looks like it, it uh, just happened to already be there. Mm -hmm. Well, this world, the world of, of Bingo Robbers feels very, um, like, it, it's definitely a St. John's film, but it, but it, it, it's this kind of like hyper real version of it, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and so it makes it super fun to watch. Um, I mean, for everybody, but also I think, you know, if you know St. John's, because it's, I don't know, it feels like it's like totally different place um, in this really fun way. Um, what was the, were there many films back then? That I, I was, this is something I was thinking about when I was watching it, uh, rewatching it the other day. Um, you know, how many films at that point do you think have been shot on digital video? Um, um, yeah, like, yeah, exactly, right? Like, it's it, the it, first it, one. Yeah, it, it's, um, yeah. Uh, was that, like, was that just like a, a cost decision? Because I, like, it, I kind of, again, it kind of, um, it lends a certain quality to it. I don't even quite sure how to describe, but I yeah. thought it was just like, you know, cost. It wasn't thing. really a cost decision. It okay. was more about um, that's that we had this idea that it was ending up on a VCR, right, not yeah. in a great bit, not shown in a, necessarily in a film house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the time, both ideas were a little bit wacky because it was really difficult to get a film like that um, shown across Canada. Mm -hmm. um, so your ability to have, have the, the film uh, play was, was almost nil. And so um, at one point, um, Dana managed to negotiate this really interesting um, uh, idea with this group in the States that we're gonna use Rogers in Canada to present like a group of Canadian film fest films as if they were in a film festival. And oh, ours right. is one of them. Right. But what happened, and I mean, I don't think we even understood what was necessary to make that work, but what we needed to be able to do was to have some money to promote our film mm. so that everybody who might rent from Rogers knew that it was there. Right. And uh, we didn't uh, think of doing that. Mm. And so Rogers has a policy that if they don't get uh, a film rented, um, if they don't get so many rentals within a certain space of time, then they sell your film. Right. So I have heard from different people that I don't know about, you know, buying this crazy film and playing <laughs> it and loving it. And, uh, um, but unfortunately we weren't able to take full advantage of that 
of that little gift we had because um, we didn't understand how to do that. Well, it's probably, it was, must have been like that kind of on-demand availability thing must have been so like new at the time. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, it's, so it must have been hard to for, to, for people to wrap their heads around, uh, which kind of leads to, to, to you know, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up here in a couple of minutes, but um, um, this film, this film actually played at the first ever Nickel Festival, uh, which is why last year when we had our little 20th year retrospective stuff, we wanted to include it. But I'm just curious, uh, what, what, have you seen the film recently? I'm wondering what it feels like now to watch it 20 years later, if you've, you know, in fact, seen it recently. I know, so, I know for me, I'm also a filmmaker. Sometimes I'm like, I, I, you know, I take, you, take a, you take a break from watching something for a while. Yeah. Made it, but yeah. Well, I have maybe watched it more than anyone else involved in it because um, I'm often the person who is uh, holding the conversation with Say You. And uh, so I want to, I just want to participate in the like the community conversation. So I'll come to the event and watch it rather than pop in, you know, after it's done. And, um, and before I say my reaction, I'm going to say that. So also interestingly enough, and I hope this gives uh, people, filmmakers, um, a real boost. Uh, just this year, a company called uh, Selco Entertainment with Dave Zellis and Craig uh, uh, Gubuch, I hope I'm saying your right, name right, Craig. Um, they have, uh, they asked us if, um, if they could, uh, if, if, if we were interested in having them have uh, um, some say over the uh, bingo robbers as property, and then mm -hmm. they will try to um, uh, uh, get it seen on different platforms. Mm -hmm. So I've been not feeling very good. So it's been quite a slow process with, with this. Uh, but as a result, we had to get the, um, what I had to watch the film and had to be closed captioned. And there was a few things like that, that mm -hmm. we had to do again mm -hmm. uh, in order to prepare it for them. And excuse me, it is up on a Amazon and I think a couple other sites as well. I think, I think it's on Amazon as well, yeah. Yeah, and I think there's a couple of other um, uh, you know, other thing. There's a few other things that I need to get done on for them, uh, which will allow them to also bring it to some other platforms. Mm -hmm. So here it is, 20 years later. I mean, sometimes they're asking me for photos and things that I just don't have anymore, yeah. and also <laughs> I don't have them in a digital format because that's <laughs> not the way we were taking them then. So mm -hmm. it's like it's really. Um, it's really interesting to see how much everything's changed. And as far as, oh yeah, before I get to the final point, I'll say also, I think sometimes there's, now I don't drink myself anymore, but uh, you could really have a good drinking game, <laughs> couldn't you? If you could like spot Johnny Harris in the dance and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. I think yeah, the Bingo yeah. Bobbers could be like a, make a, a great game because there are so many, um, uh, artists and actors in that film who've now mm. gone on to like have tremendous careers in film and um, yeah, mm -hmm. and you can just spot spot their little tiny cameos. So. Yeah, it's a real. It's a, it feels like a real time capsule in that way. Uh, it is right. Yeah, yeah. 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 and yeah. so many people have passed, like Phil Din, mm. who I thought was just amazing as the, as the very caring police officer yeah was kind of giving me family advice all the time <laughs> and and ron Hines was really funny too as the guy yeah. serving fish and chips he's, he's a great actor i also i um he's, i always there's that i always think of ron and um uh, anchor zone as well which i'm yeah. hoping i'm hoping to get as another film of the week sometimes oh that'd be um, great but, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah but yeah he was, he was he's a great he was a great actor um, he's a great actor yeah. i have a little um a little tiny film that I made with Mike Jones, uh, where he's playing the person that I ax murder. And he's also <laughs> playing like, and he's kind of a gangster character. Oh my God, he's so good. That's what? just crazy. Yeah. How good he yeah. Is. yeah, amazing. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to answer your question now. Oh, yes. You're right. 
when I watched the film over the years, 20 years, I have different reactions. Mm. Sometimes I'm like, hmm, this seems more like a music, a really, really long music visit video than a film. Other times I'm like, wow, this is a really interesting film and it's got so many fantastic characters in it. Um, other times I'm, I think Barry is really good and I'm terrible. Oh, and then I, I other times, I, uh, but lately I've thought, you know what? I'm not so bad. And I think it's just because uh, 20 years ago, you didn't see very many uh, women being nasty and yeah. having very few redeeming qualities. Yeah. And, as, and they were mothers who were constantly leaving their children everywhere. Uh, that didn't fly 20 years ago. But now, um, uh, women are allowed to pre be portrayed with uh, flaws that they might have or, or just sort of in the same way that men or other people are portrayed. Yeah, I, I totally agree. That was that was another thing I was thinking about when I was watching it today. That like you know, just sort of uh, Nancy kind of predates uh, I don't know like D Reynolds or something from It's Always Sunny. Like these like these like yeah. like comedic like women characters who are also like just as kind of like gnarly as <laughs> like the, the, the dudes are. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, and I think it's I think it's really fabulous. I think it's a really fabulous film. Uh, and I'm excited that so many people uh, now, 20 years later, so, you know, pe new people are finding it, discovering it. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I just wanted to thank you for chatting with me today. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And I think the nickel is such a crazy and wonderful uh, festival. We try. It's really, um, I really feel like it does a lot for the person who's trying to make a film, has a crazy idea. Um, maybe doesn't know everything about what they're doing. And uh, you get something together uh, <laughs> that's special and uh, the nickel is there for you. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's that's very, very kind of us. We appreciate that. Yeah. And so, yeah, so everyone go, you can, if you, right now, um, until uh, Tuesday, we have it on our website. So you can head to nickelfestival.com. Check it out. Great. Thanks so All much. All right. Thanks, Lois. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you later.